The twisted and often brutal timeline of the Half-Life universes have been home to the most deplorable acts you could imagine. But on the other side of this, it has also shown just what humanity is capable of when backed into a corner. After the Combine's enslavement of the human race, only few were initially brave enough to stand up and fight back, and the select few would grow in numbers over the years to change the course of history that their dominating rulers had set for them. One of these men not only disobeyed their orders, but he also discovered those with revolution in mind and set up a resistance against the Combine. Who was this man? What part did he play in the Resonance Cascade? And how does his story end? Here we explore, in the lore and story behind Dr. Eli Vance. Way back before the fall of humanity, a young scientist by the name of Dr. Eli Vance graduated from university, where he began his path into the scientific field. Although it is not confirmed what his chosen field of study was or which university he attended, it is presumed from a Harvard University sweater he would wear over the following years that this was the place he graduated from. Skilled in physics and research, Eli and his work were noticed by those around him, where he would later be offered a position at a top secret research facility in the New Mexico desert, the Black Mesa Research Facility. As Eli prepared for this life-changing opportunity, something else great happened. Eli met Asian. As a result of the destruction of Black Mesa and the Combine's control of human history, whatever information of Asian that did exist was lost over time. Due to Black Mesa having been a top secret facility, those who worked there were required to live on site with their families, and with Eli and Asian having formed a relationship and later married, they lived together. It is unknown what role Asian played at the facility, if any, whether she was actually a scientist there, just like her husband, or a stay-at-home wife. Regardless, as the years passed, their relationship grew stronger as Eli progressed on the scientific track. Moving into the early 2000s, Eli had cemented his position as a research and physicist in Sector C, the Anomalous Materials Lab. In here, Eli and his team were tasked with analyzing exotic materials procured from Zen, a border world that had been discovered by Black Mesa during their experimentation with teleportation. In his team, he worked with other renowned scientists who had each made great waves in the scientific community. Out of all of these, he would grow closest to Dr. Isaac Kleiner over the years, and their friendship would help them get through many tough situations. With his career excelling and his life seemingly going on the right track, more great news came. Asian fell pregnant, where she would later give birth to their daughter, Alex. With more work, the Anomalous Materials team welcomed new members to work with them, one of which was Dr. Gordon Freeman. Freeman had come highly recommended by Dr. Isaac Kleiner, as he had taught him during his time as a professor at the Massachusetts Institute for Technology. Although Gordon's work appeared to be impressive, his timekeeping was not, where he would arrive late at work on multiple occasions. On what should have been a standard day of testing, the Anomalous Materials team were given another sample taken from Zen, but something was different about this one. They were told that the administrator of Black Mesa himself, Dr. Wallace Breen, had gone to great lengths to acquire it. In their briefing for this sample, GG-3883, they were told that they needed to achieve a conclusive analysis and that they would need to go outside of the standing testing procedure to achieve it. This resulted in many power failures across Black Mesa. During this stressful morning of preparation, Gordon was once again running late, but this allowed the scientists to make use of the extra time to continue setting up the experiment. As they waited, some scientists noted that the administrator was acting strangely and out of character, like something was off. Furthermore, a government man was also spotted wandering the facility watching the personnel at work. Despite Eli and his team's concerns that this experiment may be too dangerous, 
one scientist even suggesting the possibility of a resonance cascade. Wallace ignored them and pushed for the experiment to continue. As Gordon arrived, he was briefed on the situation and moved into the test chamber. As the anti-mass spectrometer started, something strange occurred. The government man that had been wandering the facility came to Eli and warned him, prepare for unforeseen consequences. With this strange warning, Eli had the urge to stop the experiment, but did not voice his concerns and chose to go through with it anyway. As the team instructed Gordon to push the crystal sample into the beam of the anti-mass spectrometer, everything changed. The crystal shattered as it hit the powerful beam of energy, where the test chamber was flooded with exotic energy. Not only did this destroy the anti-mass spectrometer, but it also formed a resonance cascade, connecting Earth to the border world of Zen. As the facility exploded and fell around him, injuring those within, Eli had one thought in mind, to get to his wife and daughter. Black Mesa had fallen into chaos, and in an attempt to help, he tried to reach the surface using a telephone, but was discouraged to discover the lines were down. While helping a wounded colleague, Eli was surprised to see that Gordon had survived the explosion in the test chamber. Noticing his resilience, he asked Gordon to go to the surface and get help for the scientists trapped within the facility. Over the following hours, the Black Mesa research facility became increasingly more dangerous as creatures from Zen flooded in through portals, and shady government squads were sent in to clean up the mess, including any witnesses to the catastrophe. Unfortunately, Asian did not survive this incident, but Alex did. Some say she was plucked out of Black Mesa by the G-Man to safety, which would begin a tumultuous relationship between the G-Man and the Vance family. With Alex safe, on his way out through the chaos, Eli managed to grab a picture of his family to remember Asian by. Having survived this nightmare, Eli and Alex's bond would grow increasingly stronger over the years as a new nightmare began. The aftermath of the Resonance Cascade was felt across the whole planet as portal storms brought in vicious creatures from Zen. Earth's armies fought hard to hold them back, but a second invasion came in the form of the Combine Empire. Over the next seven hours, humanity fell to their knees and submitted to this empire in return for the survival of the human race. Although the Black Mesa incident had claimed many lives, Eli and Alex were not the only survivors. Of note, Dr. Isaac Kleiner and Dr. Arnie Magnusson had also made it out alive. There was also Dr. Wallace Breen, but humanity had turned their back on him after he had sided with the Combine during the invasion. The discovery that Breen had joined and collaborated with the Combine disgusted Eli. He had subjected humanity to genocide and would see Breen's later actions as beyond words and indescribable evil. Eli was known to those around him for his calm and empathetic nature, but this would not quell his hatred for Breen. As the new normal began, Eli, Isaac and Alex were relocated to City 17, a combine controlled settlement located somewhere in Eastern Europe. On his way there, it is said that he was attacked by a bull squid, in which he lost the lower part of his leg. Luckily, he survived this encounter and crafted a prosthetic leg to allow him to move around. Unwilling to submit, Eli and the other Black Mesa survivors decided they needed to do something to fight against the Combine. Here, the Resistance was born. Over the years, the Resistance grew where bases were set up, scattered across City 17 and the Wasteland. Dr. Arnie Magnusson managed to make his way out into the safety of the Outlands, where he and a small team set up a secret base to study portal technology. Dr. Isaac Kleiner decided to stay within City 17, where he set up a secret lab. Here, he could observe and gather information on Combine activity. And finally, Eli made the decision to set up a base inside of City 17's canals, in which he named Black Mesa East. Safe and secure from the constant combine raids and patrols, 
Eli and his team focused on developing technology and the freedom of those trapped inside of City 17. Over the years, Alex grew up inside of a safe environment in an unsafe world, where Eli taught her as much as he could. Although the Combine had destroyed humanity's normal way of life, they did at least bring one benefit with them, technology that was far more advanced than what humanity had. As the resistance grew, they became braver and began to raid Combine facilities to gather whatever technology and any information they could. With this, they would then dissect, learn how they worked, and then adapt them for use. With young Alex's safety in mind, Eli constructed a robot as a guardian when he went out on these raids. As humanity at this point had jumped up the technological ladder, Eli was able to successfully develop an AI system inside of this robot. Here, the robot, named Dog, would protect Alex, and as she grew, he grew with her, and would become a part of their little family. Over the years, the resistance grew stronger each day, having set up an underground railroad consisting of scattered resistance bases over the wasteland leading to Black Mesa East. Eli took in these refugees, and he later agreed to expand their base into the local abandoned mining town of Ravenholm. Having been forced to attack the Black Mesa research facility by their master, the Nylanth, the Vortigaunt species had been freed from its rule after its death, only to be then forced back into slavery by the Combine. Seeing the good in the Vortigaunt species now trapped on Earth, Eli reached out to them and built up trust, where an alliance formed between the species. This began a peaceful existence between the species, as the Vortigaunt joined the Resistance as allies, and furthermore, where the Vortigaunt would look on Eli with the highest regard. Although the Underground Railroad did allow the refugees of City 17 to navigate through the wasteland to Black Mesa East, the dangers of the wasteland sometimes took the lives of those on this journey. To this, Eli and Isaac took it upon themselves to work on teleporters, based on the technology that Black Mesa had used to jump instantly between Isaac's lab and Black Mesa East. But this technology was difficult to perfect. With the resistance gaining traction, someone new of significance joined, Dr. Judith Mossman. As Eli and Judith worked closely together, they developed a strong relationship where both appeared to care about each other deeply. But Judith had a secret. Unknown to the resistance, Judith was a spy for the Combine and had bargained for Eli's life with Wallace Breen so that he could continue his work with teleportation technology. The Combine in all their might had conquered many universes at this point, but they lacked one thing, the ability to jump from one location to another within a single universe. And so, Eli's ability to complete his work was essential to them. Due to increased resistance activity, the Combine became more aggressive in their measures to capture and interrogate the members of this movement. Unfortunately, the Combine became aware of the resistance town of Ravenholm and attacked, where they bombarded it with headcrab shells. Although many of their friends and resistance team members were in this town, Eli made the difficult decision to lock down the tunnels to Ravenholm, leaving those trapped inside to the fate of the headcrabs. This decision had led to the death of many, but it also meant that Black Mesa East could fight another day. Over time, the resistance rebuilt, and Eli continued to develop new technology to aid the resistance, one of which being the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator. Essentially, a gun that allowed its user to manipulate the gravitational fields around it. Eli had worked hard to keep his daughter safe and grow a strong community around him. The resistance was almost ready to strike back at the Combine. All they needed was a spark to begin a revolution. Approximately 20 years after the Combine invasion of planet Earth, in a train station in City 17, Gordon Freeman appeared. Opening a video call from Dr. Isaac Kleiner's lab, Eli and Judith were surprised to see Gordon standing there, completely unaged. The resistance wondered where he had been all of this time, how he had managed to simply appear on a train, and how he had not aged in two decades. 
But Eli had an idea. This was the G-Man's work, the man that had warned him of unforeseen consequences. With a plan to get Gordon to Black Mesa East, Eli and Isaac attempted to use the teleporter that they had been working on for years. After successfully bringing Alex through, it was Gordon's turn. But as the teleporter powered up, Isaac's head crab, Lamar, disrupted the process, leaving him to undergo the trip from City 17 to Black Mesa East on foot through the Underground Railroad. Waiting anxiously in Black Mesa East, Eli continued with his work. Gordon was the saviour of Black Mesa, and surely he could help remove the Combine from their planet using all of the resources Eli and his team had set up over the years of captivity. Upon his arrival, Eli greeted his old friend, but this meeting would be short-lived. Unknown to Eli, Judith had sold out Gordon, and during an invasion of Black Mesa East to capture this symbol of revolution, Eli was captured instead as Gordon escaped. Taken to Nova Prospect, Eli waited, trapped inside of a combine holding cell. To his luck, his brave daughter had discovered his location and travelled with Gordon to save him. As he was pulled out of prisoner storage, he was surprised to see that Judith was also free. As a double agent for the Combine, Judith believed it best that she sent herself and Eli to the Citadel. To this, she distracted Alex and Gordon as she set the coordinates for the teleporter to her desired location and jumped in. Through this commotion, Eli still watched, extremely confused, just hoping to be reunited with his daughter, and then he teleported. Over the next week, the Resistance would hear of the destruction of Nova Prospect as a result of the unstable teleporter. Led by Barney Calhoun, the Resistance believed that if a major Combine stronghold could be destroyed, then the Combine were not as indestructible as they had once thought. At the top of the Citadel, in Breen's office, the man he had once called a boss berated Eli and attempted to convince him to call off the Resistance as one of their leaders. In response to this, Eli expressed his disgust for this man, that he had committed his own species to genocide. Only his resistance could give back humanity what the Combine had taken. Unfortunately, the arrival of Gordon inside of a Combine pod left Eli deflated. Their symbol of revolution was now in the hands of the Combine. Once again, Breen attempted to convince Eli to call off the resistance, and when he refused again, Breen brought out another prisoner, Alex. Just like her father, she refused to comply with Breen's demands, and so, in frustration, he instead chose to send both Eli and Alex to the Combine homeworld. Although she had essentially betrayed a man she cared deeply for, the thought of losing him was what Judith needed to snap out of her control of Wallace. From his pod, Eli watched as Judith ignored Wallace's instructions and unlocked the pod of Freeman. In this chaos, Wallace grabbed the gravity gun that Eli had constructed and fled, leaving his captors free to fight another day. Still weak from his capture, Judith promised that she would stay with Eli and get him out of the Citadel as Alex and Gordon went off to fight Wallace. Although Judith had betrayed him, Eli's kind heart still warmed to her, and together, using one of Wallace's escape pods, they made their way to White Forest, where Dr. Arnie Magnuson had been working away for years. Over the following days, Eli, Judith, and even Isaac made it to White Forest. With the explosion at the top of the Citadel, the scientists theorised that a super portal would soon form, allowing the Combine to send in reinforcements to recapture the planet. Luckily, Arnie and his team had been preparing for this very moment. Working together, just like they had at Black Mesa, the remnants of the Anomalous Materials team worked against time to finish off the construction of a rocket inside of White Forest silos. If they could attach a relay device to this rocket and fire it at the super portal as it matured, they could neutralize the portal and lock out the Combine from planet Earth. Nearing completion, Eli was amazed to find that Alex and Gordon had arrived at the base safely. With his family back together, 
the team moved on to a data packet that his daughter had managed to acquire from the Citadel before its destruction. Inside, Eli, Isaac, Alex and Gordon discovered that Judith had come across not only the Combined Homeworld portal codes in the North, but she had also discovered information on a lost research vessel, the Borealis, with technology on board that could potentially aid the Resistance in their fight. The discovery of this ship and apparent attack on Judith instantly upset Eli. He argued that the technology on the Borealis could potentially lead to another Black Mesa incident, feeling immense guilt about the fact he had not stopped the experiment when he had been told to prepare for unforeseen consequences. He did not stop that, but he could stop this, arguing that nobody should have that sort of power. On the other hand, Isaac argued that the ship could help the Resistance and their goal to remove the Combine from the planet. Following this heated discussion, Eli decided that he would go after Judith and save her himself, and asked for the Borealis to be destroyed upon discovery. But, as a leader of the Resistance, Alex argued that if the Combine were to get their hands on him, they could use their advanced technology to acquire Resistance secrets. With all hands on deck, Isaac was pulled away to continue work on the rocket as Eli attempted to calm down from being riled up by this news. He would only become more irate and upset as Alex repeated the very words he had regretted ignoring two decades before. Prepare for unforeseen consequences. The G-Man had somehow got to Alex again and used her to relay this message to him. This only confirmed that he needed to have the Borealis destroyed. He and Gordon both knew of this mysterious entity, and over the years since the Black Mesa incident, Eli had learned more. What he did know is unknown, but he did plan to tell Gordon. As the rocket was completed shortly after, and feeling better, Eli watched from the missile control room with the other leaders of the resistance as the rocket launched. His hard work, loss and stress in growing this rebellion had all come to this moment where they could finally have a big win against the Combine and get one step closer to removing them completely from the planet. On his way to watch the rocket hit the portal, Eli pulled Gordon aside, out of the earshot of Alex. He was proud of this man that had survived the most dire situations and some say he saw him as the son he never had. Someone that could give him grandchildren with Alex. As the rocket hit the super portal, the relay device was activated and the portal dispersed. Their mission had been successful, but they still had work to do. Planning to go to the north to save Judith and seek out the Borealis, Eli, Alex and Gordon made their way into the hangar where Alex had fixed up an old helicopter. At this moment of happiness, their lives would change forever. On a lift down to the bottom level of the hangar, Combine advisors attacked. Using their telekinetic powers, they pinned Alex and Gordon to the wall as Eli attempted to swing at one of them with a pipe, but was unsuccessful. In retaliation to this, an advisor lifted Eli into the air. Fully aware of what was about to happen in the coming seconds, he asked Alex not to look and told her he loved her as the advisor stuck its tongue into the back of his head, killing him. Dog would jump into the hangar shortly after and save Alex and Gordon, but the damage had already been done. Eli was dead, and the resistance he had helped form over the years would mourn him. Jumping into an alternate timeline, or alter timeline, five years before, Alex met the G-Man in person as she released him from an advanced Combine prison. In response to this, he offered her a vision into the future. In this vision, Alex watched as her father died, and in his true manipulative behaviour, the G-Man allowed her to change the future. This change resulted in the death of the advisor holding her father, saving his life, but in return for Alex becoming his latest recruit. Five years later, the event played out just as Alex had seen. As Eli looked at the dead advisor, he noticed Alex disappear as the G-Man claimed his recruit. Instantly, Eli knew who was behind this strange event, and in anger, he handed Gordon his crowbar. They had work to do. 
Dr. Eli Vance was once a simple scientist in a top secret research facility, but after the invasion of the brutal Combine Empire, he chose not to submit. Instead, he became a key leader of a resistance against the dominating force and did not take no for an answer. Regardless of which timeline his fate is left in, his actions always revolved around the safety of his daughter and those he cared about. And at this moment, he's both alive and dead. If the adjusted timeline is the direction in which his legacy will continue, now his mission will be to save his daughter from the G-Man and to Judith from the Combine with the help of Gordon. Eli Vance is a video I have wanted to recreate for a while now. He is probably my second favourite character in the series. Barney will always be my favourite. Sorry. It is clear that his love for Alex and his chosen family guided his actions, and that is something I can completely relate to. Family is everything. Half-Life would not have been the same without him. His death hit hard, and I do understand why Valve chose to kill him. It meant that anyone could die. In my personal opinion, it is a shame they went back on his death in Half-Life Alex. His death meant something. I did also want to mention his counterparts in the Half-Life 2 beta briefly. I will be making a dedicated video on beta content, but I do find it extremely interesting that Eli was a combination of two cut characters, Eli Maxwell and Captain Vance. Each of these have great lore. Briefly, Maxwell was still a scientist, but he was not Alex's father. Captain Vance was one of Earth's last military leaders that had survived the Combine invasion. He was Alex's original father. Again, I don't want to go too much in depth into these characters, but I did like that they were merged into one. My final note is that I did try something new with my voiceover this week. I did try to go for a faster pace. Let me know if you prefer this version or my old kind of slower version. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts to boost that algorithm. I would also like to thank my patrons and channel members who are on the screen right now, and an extra special thank you to my gold tier patrons and channel members. Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, and Mr. M791. What did you think of this lore? Where does Eli rank in your favorite Half-Life characters? And which ending version of Eli's life do you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Now Resistance member, enjoy your day. Bye.